top priority of mine when I served in the state Senate was passing the climate leadership and community protection. A top priority of mine as Ulster County Executive is to achieve its goals and the many benefits that will bring to our communities. Look, everyone is struggling right now under the weight of skyrocketing fossil fuel prices. And the only ones winning right now, as our previous speaker so eloquently pointed out, is are the oil and gas companies, right? Their profits have increased by literally 170%. That's profits in this, this year alone to $125 billion. They're profiting from our pain at the pump, from the $6 a gallon plus that we're paying for heating oil, and from the high natural gas prices that are driving our high utility bills. The sooner we reduce our dependence on fossil fuels and shift to a clean energy economy, the better we all will be. I see just enormous opportunities for Ulster County in meeting the goals of New York's Climate Act and shifting to a clean energy economy. Opportunities to reduce and stabilize energy costs. Opportunities to create thousands of well-paying jobs. Opportunities to improve public health by eliminating all of those other nasty pollutants that cause diseases like asthma, especially in disadvantaged communities. Opportunities to keep more of our sp energy spending locally in our economy. Right now, over half of what we spend on energy leaves the state, primarily to pay for fossil fuels. And really importantly, the opportunity to make sure we are developing in a sustainable way that leaves no one behind. To fully realize these opportunities, we need additional resources from the state to implement the Climate Act. And I'll just give you a few examples. Uh, Legislator Erner mentioned transportation and public transit, and I am totally in alignment with him on how critical that is. And I wanna give him a shout out too for his leadership in making it free, UCAT free. In New York. <laughs> State resources already play an important role in funding municipal transit systems. Um, I, was, um, I was not pleased to see in the scoping plan, the draft scoping plan to implement our climate law at the state level, that there was no talk of expanding municipal transportation systems, but that's absolutely critical to reducing our greenhouse gas emissions. It's a leading sector here in Ulster County and in the state, um, but also importantly, public transportation is so important to expanding people's access to job opportunities, to educational opportunities, um, to the health care they need if they don't own a car, right? So it's critical public infrastructure and we're going to need more state resources to invest in that and to continue electrifying our, our bus fleet. And if you haven't ridden one of our three electric buses in uh, Ulster County, it is a smooth ride, <laughs> I can tell you that. But we have to continue along that path to a zero emissions fleet. Um, on the buildings front, so buildings are, are the leading source of our emissions in New York State. We need the state to commit more funding to expanding the affordable housing stock, but doing so in a way that creates energy efficient, all electric housing. We don't want to, we, we can't afford to build, build that housing in the way we've always done it before. We face an incredible housing crisis here in Ulster County, and a big focus of mine will be on expanding supply, but we want to get it right from the start, and we'll need help in doing that. In terms of our existing building stock, we just, we need more resources to support our residents and small businesses in retrofitting their buildings and weatherizing their buildings, and this is especially the case for low income, moderate income, fixed income households who pay, who are suffering with a disproportionate burden of energy costs and are least able to make the investments to reduce those costs in their buildings. Um, one of, one of um, my, the, 
Initiatives I'd like to undertake at the county level is to create an energy services office that connects people with those resources so they can make those investments, but we need more of it if we're going to reach those goals. And as Melissa ever pointed out earlier, all of these investments pay huge dividends over time. These are not giveaways. These will actually reduce people's costs. They will, re they will reduce public costs by improving public health. So it's all positive investments. Um, there are many other examples I could list, um, and, but we have a big program. So I just want to close on what is a really critical point. The revenue raised to fund the Climate Act cannot burden our residents and small businesses. It absolutely has to be done fairly. And a good place to start is to end the $330 million annual giveaway to the fossil fuel industry. Eliminate the, the, the subsidies that we're currently giving them. Direct that in investing in clean energy, the clean energy investments that will improve um, the health and well-being of our communities and reduce our energy costs. I want to thank New York, New York Renews and encourage you to look at the whole package because their focus is on fair funding of the Climate Act. Thank you very much.